it's the culmination of our event. Uh, no FIP World Congress or indeed Digital Innovator Summit would be complete without uh, the irrepressible uh, Juan Senor and John Wilpers. They are here. They're here to tell us how to get on board the Innovation Express. Uh, so to launch effectively or give you some highlights from the Innovation Report, and by the way, you can buy copies here at a discounted rate, uh, please welcome uh, those two people, Juan Senor and John Wilpers. Well, good afternoon. How is everybody? <laughs> Ready for beer, right? OK, we're going to take a look today at the way forward. Every year since 2010, we have given you the innovations that will make a difference in your future of your company. All these titles. We were among the first to introduce the uh, threat of ad fraud. We were among the first to introduce the possibilities of progressive web apps. And we were among the first to talk about magazines that could be printed from stone. Literally, stone dust. That's this year's book. The books are based on 12 months of research in our global consulting experience. And as he just mentioned, you can buy this book. Uh, you can actually pre-order if you're, if, you're, if you're stuck for a Christmas gift for your spouse. This is a really high quality gift. I'm sure he or she would appreciate it. And while I have your attention, we are just now beginning to look for the best innovations in the world. So if you have an innovation that you would like to share with the world, please send it to me, wilpers at innovation.media, 150 words. And these have to be not trends, but these have to be proven successful innovations. So some metric that says this is working. And you could also just grab me and talk to me about it. And we could arrange a way to get the, the story into consideration. So quickly, a little innovation background. Through our innovation books and our global consulting work, we help puncture hype. We empower change, and we enable the future for media companies. You know your company. We know the industry. Putting the two together, we end up with good journalism being good business. The Financial Times said we're one of those most famous firms in specializing in newspapers. And The Economist said that we can't fix the business model without fixing the editorial model. These are some of the clients we've worked with. We've won a design and concept in Europe. And I'm going to turn it over to Juan. Uh, to talk about, uh, from the entire book, of course, a lot of chapters, a lot of content. But one single innovation that we want to communicate to you today, uh, because it's absolutely essential that we have a laser focus uh, this year and in the years to come, uh, given what's happening in the entire environment. And we've narrowed down to this, the need and innovations to migrate from out revenue to reader revenue. And there's a lot of innovative advice in this year's book and in next year's book precisely about this. And I'm talking, of course, about digital, digital reader revenue. This is the big one. And this is my message to you today. If you want to have the drinks, uh, go ahead. You can have it now. Spare the rest of the 20 minutes. But if this year or early next year you're not charging for digital content, you should just get out of this business. It's game over. And we're that serious about making this the priority for this year and sending this strong message, because we do believe that the entire business is out of kilt, out of kilter, it's out of balance. And what we're going to talk here today is about this message that you should be charging people for either their data or their money. They have to pay for these two things. And in some cases, paying for their data uh, to you, giving you their data, can be much more worthwhile than giving you just their money, a traditional subscription. And we'll see the reasons why. But unless you take the attitudinal strategic decision that from now on, we must have content, some content, that is definitive, decidedly, and consistently being demanded that in the digital transaction, somebody gives you their data, or their wallet, or opens their wallet, uh, we really do not believe that there is a future for you as publishers. Why? Well, we know it, and I don't need to restate it, but advertising on its own will never pay the bills. It will never pay the bills. We know the end of the story. We've been at it for far too long. Display advertising is dying. In some markets still going up, those CPMs, it's a swan song. 
And this is where we are today. This is our business, and we must face this reality. It's a one-legged stool. This is out of kilter. It's broken. The model does not work. And for you to be like this, with this kind of exposure, you know, it's, it's quite concerning. The perverse thing about all this is that digital advertising globally is growing, but it's growing for these two, for Facebook and Google. Twitter is a remnant of what these two get. It's a duopoly. It's a duopoly the Press Gazette is calling out. And of course, uh, they're talking about the fact that they're destroying, destroying our business. Of course, Patrick uh, defending them as not a platform, uh, a, pla a publisher, but a platform. But indeed, the dynamic is there. And it's there globally in the US. This is how big they are in terms of controlling the digital advertising market. Our message to you is you shouldn't be Luddites. Uh, these are the guys who are building the internet. We must be in Facebook and we must play with them. We must use them, but not let them abuse us. And up until now, the dynamic that we hear repeatedly, which precludes innovation, is people indeed uh, believing that you can build a business based on this. And so far, you are white label producers building these platforms. And there's just no way around it. We just have to have the intellectually honest discussion to call it for what it is. And we're fomenting it, unfortunately. Uh, we're succumbing to their charm offensive. They're in every single media event globally. They're there telling you that now they're going to offer subscriptions. They'll share the data. Look at us. We're the technology thing. We're this, we're that. We just don't think the way we're going about it is smart or sensible going forward, yes? And I think this is a very, very basic but very insightful principle for you to have when you rebuild your digital reader revenue strategy. And it's so obvious, and yet we've lost sight of this. Money is made, and money will be made where the article is viewed. That's it. The rest is just promises of false prophets. We've heard it long enough. Give us your content, give us your content, we'll build it, we'll cut your check. It's just not going to change. The dynamic, the reality is that the money is made where the article is viewed. It is so today and it will be so tomorrow in the digital age. So magazine media built and dependent on a display ad model, you're really in serious trouble and quite vulnerable. And we're seeing it, the digital pure players that we all look up to. Mashable was here a moment ago. There have layoffs. BuzzFeed has profit warnings. All these people are having serious traction problems because the digital ad revenue is just not paying the bills. They will not pay the bills. Free is expensive. And let's go back to the basics of business to try to really, with head, not just uh, uh, aspiration, try to rebuild the business. And value, value is paid. Uh, and that's the basis of business, but we have devalued it with clickbait and commoditized content. Another principle we apply to the digital paid strategies we do is this. Everything that generates value should generate revenue. Because if not, when something's cheap, someone inevitably pays the price. And it's been us. It's been us for far too long. So on top of it, even more worrisome, we're now losing money and losing trust because of the pollution that exists around digital advertising and our digital content being associated with uh, platforms that indeed have issues with trust and credibility. Editors, they always wanted to create great, great content, but this clickbait, this traffic uh, you know, addiction really is something that has uh, tarnished our business in a serious way and it has to change. So how do we migrate firmly to a new logical business content model? First, how do we migrate from this ad revenue to digital reader revenue? This is just a funnel. I'm sure many of you have gone through these funnels. This is what we go through with a client. And again, the starting point is any, any digital reader is going to pay us, either with their data or with their money. And again, getting that data sometimes longer term can be much more valuable than just a, a small economic transaction. And these are the different products and the different dynamics in which you can take people through this funnel in the coming years. Unless you're in this dynamic of presenting them with different experiences and different, different digital products, uh, is, is very difficult to build a sustainable business. Uh, this is the conversion funnel. We're working for a major publisher, one of the biggest magazines in New York. And um, you can see their unique viewers. They're very proud of this, but they're saying, look, even though we've almost doubled our unique visitors, there's just no money here. 
So we took them to this conversion towards a data wall, which as you can see is there, and obviously a conversion to subscribers at the bottom. Uh, the journey has led to very, very interesting numbers in, in, in just a, a few months for them, beginning to charge where there was nothing being charged for, and a social media first platform. This is what their approach to publishing was just a year ago. And what are the early lessons for charging for online content? First of all, people are willing to pay for content. They are willing to pay. This has changed dramatically. The Generation Y, they've grown up paying for Spotify, for Netflix. I know that many of them have an account and they share it with all their classmates and so on. But they are paying, paying. Us and millennials who grew up with the birth of the free internet uh, are more reluctant to pay. But the new generation are accustomed and they will pay. It is happening. The average European pays 50 euros a month for digital access and content. Adding $5 to that with a serious or credible brand or a passion that they have is a no-brainer and the price elasticity is very, very acceptable. Reduced traffic is not catastrophic. Oh, if we pull out of Facebook, we pull out of this, it's all going to come crashing down. Exactly the opposite happens longer term. Of course, you do have a, deep, a, a dip, but it increases a longer term. And again, the play here is, do you want scale or do you want revenue? Do you want to be a big publisher with huge metrics that doesn't make money? Or do you want to be a publisher that chooses an audience and monetizes it with them paying for that content? And this coefficient, you've heard it before, a 3% conversion rate is quite, quite a safe bet for you to do in your initial modeling. That's for the initial, initial two years of a conversion strategy. Uh, but there are different ways and means to increase that. But just that 3%, immediately you hit a wall with the dedicated readers. Uh, and then you have to find different ways and means to get there. Social media traffic, whatever you have, you have to keep it open. And charging for online helps the paper product. We just saw The Economist saying they're bundling both digital and paper, and they're charging more. It's logical, and it's clever to do it as long as until somebody tells you, please stop sending me the printed product, if they do so. But bundling really can increase the bottom line significantly. And again, a lot of people come to us and say, well, what's the, what's the method then? Should it be a metered wall like the New York Times? Should it be a hard pay wall? Should it be this? Should it be that? And the reality is that you can choose different methodologies along your journey. Uh, beginning, perhaps, a metered model is best, but now we've even seen the introduction of dynamic paywalls. These are being used in Scandinavia quite successfully by some publishers, and that basically is yield software, you using software to see when there's a lot of demand and charging accordingly. So if you have Fashion Week, uh, Vogue should be charging because you have a lot of traffic coming in at a certain time. When it isn't, you introduce a different strategy of perhaps a freemium model and so on. So you don't, don't start at the end by choosing the mechanism under which I make the transaction. Uh, you can have many, many of these uh, different mechanisms along your journey. And again, this is the key, key question then. If I have now understood that the greatest focus on my innovation has to be migrating from ad revenue to reader revenue in a digital experience, then this is the obvious logical question. Do I have content worth paying for? And what content that I make will trigger subscription? And what's above, we know you'll never make money out of it. That's completely commoditized. What's below, it's fascinating to rediscover as the foundation for our business. And it's obvious and yet not so obvious, yeah? A niche, uh, a why, and what's next, uh, this is scarce. It's difficult to find that kind of content. And uh, we're seeing in local teams, businesses, hobbies, passions, which a lot of your magazines are about, but you can drill deeper and find fascinating, fascinating ways of making money uh, digitally. And this is the key. You have to be an inch wide, but a mile deep. This is, again, from a client in New York, identifying the psychometrics and owning that franchise, that audience. This is a very small audience, and yet this is, in a way, the reverse of the long tail, right? The long tail, this is the reverse. The higher the audience share you have, the higher the share of the advertising revenue you will have for that audience. And we're not capitalizing on this. We're believing still that a volume business will bring us the revenue. Not so. This is what you must focus on, an inch wide and a mile deep. So even though you think, oh, yeah, I own the auto section, I own the sports, the football section, you have to drill it deeper, deeper. We have a client in, in Germany that is shut down football coverage of a third division football team. 
and they've generated 20,000 subscribers because that's pretty much the community, but they own it. They do journalism about that football and they've shut it down. So in a world of digital abundance, you need to be unique. You need to find that scarcity and you will find the money because a page views based advertising business model is completely incompatible with quality and reader revenue. We believe it should be 40% of your digital revenue model to add another leg to that stool. It will still be crooked, but you need to begin to add and extend that leg to that stool. And what do I do with my existing digital ad business? This is, of course, something that you shouldn't give up and you should try to extend it as long as possible. And our message is to move from clicks to clocks. What does this mean? To go from page views to time spent from selling CPM to selling cost per hour. This mechanism, this formula is being used by the Financial Times here, the Economist is using it as well. They're selling you cost per hour, no longer CPMs. Because advertisers really, they want that time spent. And why is this? I mean, why, why focus and why change so radically to CPH and be ahead? And this is again, an innovative way we're telling you to be a little bit ahead of the industry in this. It's because digital click ad fraud is really on an industrial scale. It's really gotten out of hand. Facebook is fully aware of it. They paid out to a lot of advertisers penalties before going to court in settlements. I host the Cannes Lions every year. It's one of the biggest issues that a lot of, a lot of money is the victim of ad fraud. And this is why, have a look. This is a click farm in China. Yeah? And this is a video from um, a reporter in Russia, they visited one of these farms, and you can see what's going on here. You can pay them $200, and uh, overnight, they will click on whatever it is you want them clicked, uh, and they will give you up to a million of um, clicks and likes, and whatever you contract. This is an undercover reporter from Russia going to one of these click farms, posing as a customer, and this is real. They exist in China. I've seen one of them in Argentina. <laughs> And uh, these are IP, unique, mobile viewers, and uh, advertisers know this is happening. And unfortunately, a lot of your websites are selling this kind of CPMs, uh, which are obviously completely related to fraud. Look, one of the employees even blew a kiss at the end. So, let's move on. So, so this is quite concerning and, and, and you're selling in this marketplace and our message is to get out of it. Yeah? Stop competing for page views and really uh, start selling time spent through CPH. And there's a new definition for engagement and this is something you need to put forth to your advertisers. This is how we're going to sell to you our audience from now on. This is the equation. It's being used by the Financial Times, others here in the UK. And it is time spent plus proof of readership. That's an added two numbers. Multiplied by returning frequency, that shows you that it's not a click farm in China, it's not a bob, it's, in, in, it's, it's real. And all this divided by cross-platform UVs. Sorry, in the presentation, that division line should be above, above cross-platform UV. Somehow it slipped down. And that equals engagement. Of course, uh, cross-platform UVs includes all social media platforms. So this is the new uh, equation for you to sell CPH as opposed to CPM. Let me uh, talk a little bit about print quickly because, um, as I said, if you migrate to a digital, strong digital reader revenue strategy, it reinforces print. We firmly believe, and you heard us in the books year after year, writing about print innovation, uh, print for profit. We believe it may not be the long-term answer in terms of frequency for many of you, but we've always said the print is eternal. It will be part of your mix, but it is indeed uh, a bridge to the future and you mustn't let it crumble. And what we're seeing as a result of all this ad fraud that perhaps the time has come to also revisit print and rethink print as something that is worth uh, representing in a different way as a premium product, as coincidentally and counterintuitively with in a nature of more, less paper and people wanting less paper, giving them more paper. We're seeing cases of magazines that are extra size and charging more. And um, even Martin Sorrell talking this year about the fact that the effectiveness of newspapers and magazines, even in their traditional form in an age of ad fraud of so many flavors, uh, they're having a big comeback, yes? But in this process, 
this is where we've lost sight. We, we, we believe that we've, we've jumped into, in, into a dynamic of being uh, digitally first and, and, and social media first and mobile first, losing the sight of the fact that you can indeed uh, make the transition through a print reality. So we believe that the trick is this, uh, digitally sustainable before you become print and sustainable. And unless you get that revenue from readers, you'll never reach digital sustainability. It will not come from advertisers. It will not come enough from e-commerce, from licensing your brand, from opening cafes, and so on. This was a, a very interesting interview with the New York Times I did in March. And I think this is an incredible quote. And I think I interview lots of CEOs all over the world. And, and listen to what Mark Thompson said. I, I think it's an epochal quote um, and incredibly smart. And of course, they're having tremendous success with reader revenue. And he said, look, I'm trying to build a digital model big enough and strong enough for when print revenue is at zero. So this is his starting assumption. As a CEO, it's my responsibility for this company to generate value is to completely push them into a change management and a change culture where print revenue is zero. And of course, he, 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 he clarified in the interview that he doesn't want print to die. On the contrary, they're doing extremely well on the weekend, particularly with magazines. But this is, this is his starting point. And when you press him on that, OK, well, so you've got whatever, two and a half billion dollars of cost to cover. Is that going to come from, uh, from, from digital ad revenues? It's absolutely no. I mean, for us, it's 70, 30. That's their calculation. 70 will have to come from readers. And he says, oh, we're not just selling them a subscription. I'm selling them an experience. I'm selling them on and on and on. But one of the biggest obstacles is the news media suffer from, from the next big thing syndrome. One of the things that we're seeing globally is this, the next big thing syndrome. We're all waiting for Godot. You know, and what do it just never comes. We're waiting for digital salvation. And um, we thought that the digital salvation, and we've had it at all this conference, we invite people to talk about VR and 360 News and then the Apple Watch and tablets, all this is the salvation, it's coming, yes? And uh, there's a lot of next big thing syndrome. And um, this one in particular, I like a lot. This is, without a doubt, the future. This is uh, the next big thing. So get ready to watch RR. Where virtual reality ends, real reality begins. Experience the NHL Centennial Exhibit in RR. When you're looking at Sidney Crosby's gloves, you're looking at Sidney Crosby's gloves. I'm looking at Sidney Crosby's gloves. How? RR lets you see things that are actually there. Real reality, only at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So there's no digital salvation. There's no instant digital salvation. There are no digital miracles. There are plenty, plenty of churches, temples here if you want a miracle. Uh, really, only journalism, good magazine journalism and storytelling will save journalism. It's not going to come from a device. It's not going to come from Facebook, from Google. And the journey is through reader revenue. And again, without transforming the editorial workflow, it's simply impossible to do that. You need to have an editorial department that delivers content worth paying for. And that's a fascinating discussion to have with editors. When we sit down with editors and you go through that, and they, it's, it's quite soul searching and sometimes soul destroying to see that really very little of what we've got is worth paying for. And very little of our content can trigger a subscription. So if you change your editorial department, you change your fortunes. This has to go together, together with a digital reader revenue strategy. And again, innovation will not happen in labs. It will not happen because of digital natives, SWAT teams, vice president, unless it happens throughout the organization. It won't happen. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. We've said this repeatedly. It has to be planned, sustained, and funded. You can't wait for the next big thing to bring the great innovation that you hear at a conference, and somehow everything has changed. Uh, I even had a publisher recently that showed me this render of their new office. It's like, look, Juan, we have a slide going from the third floor to the second floor. Uh, aren't we a cool company? Yeah, so um, again, um, this is not the way to go about it. Uh, it has to be uh, sustained. Digital innovation, curiously enough, is easier than print innovation. It begins at the top, but it happens at the bottom. You indeed can come up with the drive, but it will happen at the bottom. And the big change is we were a print media uh, with a digital operation. Now we're a digital media with a print operation. But you must change those workflows. Otherwise, you will not change the logic of production 
of producing content worth paying for. And yet, and yet, editorial departments somnambulating into an abyss. All right, we're going to wrap this up real quick. I'm going to run through these things. You can get this from uh, FIP. They're going to put it up. Change is not going to be easy. People resist it with all their possible strength, and there are many working dead who won't do it anyway. We need an, an, a revolution because we haven't had enough evolution. You have to blow up your old teams, job descriptions, work schedules, publishing schedules, org charts, everything. And no one in the company can be exempt. You can't say this guy can't, doesn't have to do it. And if you don't get it behind at 100%, it will fail because, as a matter of fact, 77% of reorganization efforts do fail. And the consequences are that you have, you're in worse shape than you were before because you've raised hopes and dashed them. And the emotional commitments have been violated. So the next time you try to do it, you're in big trouble. And they'll greet the next change with massive skepticism. So here are nine rules in 23 seconds. Take the long view. Do not solve for the short term. Interview everybody. You might think you know the problems. You don't. Interview everybody in the company. Involve everybody in creating solutions. Use volunteers. Deliver results early, often, and publicly. Accept that you don't have the needed talent that you must hire and you must train. Identify resistance and work to change minds. In advance, set metrics, because if you come to a point and somebody says it's not working, if you have metrics, you can prove that it is. If you don't have metrics, it's an argument. Reach out regularly and personally during the process, or people will feel they've been left out, and create backup plans for setbacks. Zero. We're going to have to end it right there. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for coming. Uh, like I said, you can buy the book, uh, this book, the current book, for just 20 pounds at the store here, or you can pre-order that Christmas gift for 50 pounds. And the entire presentation is available. If you send us an email, we'll be happy to send it along to you. So uh, get going with this big transformation. And again, um, it is about transforming from ad revenue to reader revenue. We don't see any other way forward. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Lots of content delivered very rapidly, just the way we like it. Uh, OK, the bar is about to open, and I won't hold you from it any longer than I have to. Uh, it's simply my duty to remind you that we need to be here by 9 o'clock tomorrow. So on about your fifth beer, I just think I do have to set the alarm. 9 a.m. sharp tomorrow. Great day today. And we're going to be hearing from Brunner and Yar in the morning. So good night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>